Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Export Market Development Grants Program Information Session for T2 applicants on how to submit your application online to the EMDG online portal. My name is Nima Gunic, and I look after the implementation and delivery of the EMVG program here at Austrade. And with me in the room delivering this webinar is my colleagues, Melissa uh, Zygleski, who is the System Design Manager and who will be helping us um, in explaining all the system requirements and also showing you through the online application for Form 42 applicants. Melissa and I are in Sydney on the Gadigal land of the Eora Nation and we respectfully pay our respects to the um, owners and custodians of the land of which we meet today and pay our respects to the elders past and present. We recognise the enduring connection of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people have with this land and uh, we extend our respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people joining us today, uh, acknowledging their rich histories, cultures and contributions. Bit of housekeeping before we begin. Um, your microphone and video has been turned off uh, if you're not presenting, and we will be using Slido um, in this webinar today for any questions and answers. The hashtag is EMBG. We will open the Slido function later in the webinar, given that we will be presenting some content and your questions may be answered during the session. So please bear with us, and once the Slido opens, please post your questions to Slido. Please do not post your questions to WebEx chat because those questions are need to be transferred to Slido for other uh, participants to see. So Slido will be open with the hashtag EMDG a bit later in the webinar. We'll cover today a few topics, but mostly we'll focus on the system uh, requirements and the online application form. We'll recap uh, briefly uh, on the eligibility requirements for T2 applicants, the grant amount and the opening date. We'll take you to the steps on how to prepare to apply. Uh, we'll have a demonstration of the online portal and we'll also spend some time going through mandatory attachments requirements and some other useful tips for the system. And as I said, there will be time for questions and answers at the end. So, um, as you know, uh, the round four will be launching very soon in November for uh, T2 uh, applicants exactly on the 12th of November. We release the grant guidelines on the 13th of August, well in advance of opening the grant round. And this is to help you understand uh, the requirements, the changes to EMDG, and prepare to apply. We have since delivered four public webinars uh, on eligibility requirements uh, for each tier, and those webinars have been published on our website for you to refer to uh, if you need to uh, check your eligibility also to that. We have received a number of uh, inquiries and responded to a high volume of, volume of them uh, so far, and we continue to receive those. Uh, so please, if you have any other questions that are not addressed uh, with our web content, the guidelines, or in today's webinar as well, you can write to us again to the EMDG Help Desk. We do encourage you prior to submitting your application to definitely read the grant guidelines. That, that, that is um, a single source of truth on how to prepare to apply and on all eligibility requirements. In addition to the guidelines, we have published the sample application form for each tier that is also published on our website. Uh, we have also uh, published exemplars of the plan to market documents that you need to have ready for your application. And we have numerous videos and explanatory videos on our website as well to help you understand the changes, prepare to apply and uh, get ready. The EMDG Update Newsletter is our main channel for uh, updating all subscribers uh, to uh, what is new in the program and anything that changes, and also opening dates uh, when we close the portal to applications and anything around eligibility requirements, compliance, etc. So please, if you haven't, please subscribe to that EMDG Update Newsletter. And as I said, EMDG Help Desk can uh, support you with any further inquiries. The um, eligibility conditions, just to recap for T2 applicants, uh, we will just briefly recap it. But just to uh, note that the applications for T2 will open on the 12th of November uh, at 10 a.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Saving Time. The eligibility requirements for T2 is for established exporters that are exporting and also wishing to expand 
uh, your marketing and promotional activities within your existing export market. So that is very important to emphasize. If you are already exporting, you need to provide obviously evidence that you are exporting and you want to expand that export promotion within your existing export market. So it must be your existing market. The grant size uh, in this year is minimum 20,000 per financial year up to 50,000 per financial year. So, and that is for both years. Round four will open, uh, as I said, in November. It will be in respect of eligible uh, expenditure for you that you will incur in 25, 26 and 26, 27. We plan or estimate to offer around 620 grants in this year. And this estimation is based on everyone applying for the maximum grant of 50,000 um, in each year. That is the number of grants that we could offer. If someone applies or many applicants apply for less than 50, then we could offer more grants. We will keep the portal open until we exhaust that funding in this team. And again, it will open at 10 a.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Saving Time on 12th of November, and it will close once we allocate the funding. So this webinar, again, is for T2. Uh, if you are intending to apply in a different T, we'll have another webinar this afternoon for T3 applicants. And yesterday we ran our webinars for uh, T1 and representative body tier. I will now hand over to my colleague, uh, Melissa, to take us through how to prepare your T2 application and um, online portal. Great. Thank you, Noma. This is just a recap. Okay. Yes. Great. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Let me just recap this for everyone to see for your information. Yes. So as I said, um, it will be closed. So uh, the way how we distribute uh, grants has changed in round four is no longer opening and getting everyone to submit uh, during a certain ap application period. Um, it has to be um, when we open and then we close, when we exhaust the funding. Uh, and even if you submit your application before we close the online portal, you may miss out because the funding may be allocated before we get to assess your application. So uh, that is important to remember. Over to you, Melba. Excellent. Thank you. So what we'll do now is we'll now showcase a video highlighting how to submit the online application via the EMDG online portal. The video is a general overview um, of the form design and how to complete it. It does not go into detail or answering each individual question relevant to the tier you're applying. And that's primarily because every business will respond to each question differently due to the nature of their business operations and activities. The form is simple and intuitive. If you have prepared your answers and have your mandatory documents ready to upload, it should only take you about 30 to 45 minutes to complete. Before we hit play, please ensure you have your volume up. And if you have any technical issues in viewing the, doc, uh, viewing the video from your end of the webinar, we'll provide you with the YouTube link in the WebEx chat and you can access it from your own device. Lastly, a video disclaimer. In the video, you will see the online application form from our test environment. This may be slightly different to when you actually go into the live site to apply. And this is just a few tweaks and changes to the language. This video will demonstrate the EMDG online application form process. Before you start your application form in the portal, you will need to read the round four EMDG grant guidelines, download and familiarize yourself with the sample application form from our website, Perhaps even pre-fill your responses in the sample application form where possible so that you can copy and paste them into the online form when it opens. Set up your digital identity and check if you can log into the portal. Prepare the supporting documents that are relevant to the tier you're applying for and watch the Get Ready to Apply for EMDG videos available from our website. All businesses and organisations must submit their EMDG application form through the EMDG online portal. The EMDG online portal login page is where you access the application form, see regular updates on the current and previous rounds, and host technical specifications and other relevant information. To access the application form, 
you need to log into the EMDG online portal by scrolling down to the middle of the page and logging in with your government digital ID. Your digital ID must be connected to the business's ABN that you will be applying for a grant. You can do that through the government's relationship management system, also known as RAN. If you do not have a digital ID, you will not be able to apply. So to get your ID, visit the homepage of the EMDG portal and follow the links to the ATO's registration page. Getting your ID can take some time though. So our advice is to set up your digital ID well in advance of the round opening. To log in, enter your MyGov ID email address, then select Get Code. A four digit code will appear on the login screen. Log into your MyGov ID on your mobile device using your 10 character password, fingerprint or face recognition. Enter or accept the four digital code in your MyGov ID app to continue. The EMDG online portal homepage is where you can access Austrade's export readiness test, start your new application form, access prior grant applications, grant agreements and milestone reports, check the status of your current application, as well as where you'll be able to access your grant agreement and lodge your milestone reports when they become available. The application form is divided into five tabs. Each tab must be completed before moving on to the next one. You do this by clicking on Save and Next at the bottom of each page. We recommend that you save often so that your work is never lost. You can do this by clicking on Save here. You can also save and exit to, if you want to come back to it later. However, this does not hold your place in the queue only submitted applications will be assessed in the order that they are received. Questions that are mandatory have an asterisk. Validations and error messages will appear if questions are not completed correctly or you do not meet any eligibility requirement. Recheck your responses to ensure your application is complete and correct. You can also see which documents you need to upload. You can upload at each tab or you can wait until the end of the form. The choice is yours. Helpful information and guidance is available throughout the form in purple boxes. The eligible applicant tab is the first section of the application form. To start the application, you must read and accept the terms and conditions of use and confidentiality and privacy provisions. Simply click on the hyperlinks to access the information. The tab is divided into three sections, tier selection and eligibility, applicant business details, applicant business structure, the tier selection and eligibility section of the tab is where you select which tier you're applying and answer other key eligibility questions up front. The form has been designed to validate if you are eligible to receive a grant under the tier you have selected. It checks your prior grant history to see if you have applied for EMDG before. It also has validations in place for other questions. As a Tier 2 applicant, you must select up to 10 markets you intend to promote your eligible products. These markets must be your existing export markets that you intend to expand within. State your annual turnover and provide us with two years of profit and loss statements and balance sheets. Tell us if you have the minimum capacity to spend up to $20,000.
per fund entry of your own funds. The applicant business details section has certain fields that are pre-filled from the ABR and, and ASIC websites. For example, the date of business commencement. In, it is in this section that you will declare if you are tax compliant and be prompted to provide us with evidence to support your declaration. The applicant business structure section is where you provide us with the details of any related companies, name of all company directors and partners, and if you're a First Nations organisation. The eligible tier tab has been designed to ask you questions that are specific to the tier that you have selected. It is within this tab you'll answer a series of questions that will determine if you're eligible for the tier and be prompted to upload supporting documents to prove your eligibility. As a tier two applicant, you must demonstrate that you have previously exported in the markets that you intend to promote. To demonstrate that you have exported, you need to tell us when your most recent export sale was, upload export evidence, and list export sales by market. We only need you to provide up to 10 markets here, and they must be the same as where you are intending to, to promote. You will need to tell us if you're seeking to expand within your existing markets and explain how you have a designated connection to your eligible products. Remember to review your responses before you click on Save and Next. The Plan to Market and Eligible Expenses tab requires attention to detail. This tab is divided into three sections, Plan to Market, Eligible Expenses, Optional Questions. The Plan to Market section is where you must provide unique, high quality and specific responses to your business. All questions are mandatory. They must be completed with sufficient detail and must directly relate to your planned export promotional activities. You cannot submit plan to market responses that are copied from another business or submit generic marketing plan responses. If you do, your application will be deemed ineligible. Your responses in the plan to market section can be up to 3000 characters in length or approximately 500 words. If you have pre-prepared your response, you can copy and paste your response in the text box. The planned eligible expenditure table is a mandatory section that must be completed. To do this, select the category or categories that you plan to spend the grant money on and fill in the respective amounts. The total planned eligible expenditure will be automatically calculated in table as the sum of the amounts you entered for each planned eligible expenditure. It cannot be more than double the maximum grant amount, that is $100,000 for the T, and cannot be less than $40,000 per financial year. The total grant amount sought is the amount that you enter. You tell us how much you want to receive each financial year. The total grant amount sought per financial year is to be calculated as 50% of your planned eligible expenditure up to the maximum grant amount per tier, that is $50,000.
and cannot be less than $20,000 per financial year. You can only receive a grant for eligible expenditure and you must match the total grant amount sought with your own funds. You must provide a copy of your current bank statement and bank account transactions with your application to demonstrate that you have at least $20,000 per financial year of your own funds to match the minimum grant of $20,000 per financial year. Please double check your total grant amount sought and ensure that you can match the grant within, with your own funds. The table has system validations and error messages will come up if you enter amounts greater than the amounts allowed. You must declare that you have the minimum $20,000 per financial year to match the minimum grant amount of $20,000. You can match the total grant amount sought with your own funds. You understand that if you spend less than $20,000, you will not receive a grant payment and you will not spend the grant funding on ineligible expenses. The last section is the optional questions. Your responses to the following questions are optional. Answering these questions will help Austrade understand your business's overall export readiness as outlined in Austrade's Go Global Toolkit and potentially offer other trade services. Remember to review your, your responses before you click on Save and Next. To be eligible for a grant, you must have an eligible product. It is in this tab that you select and identify the eligible product you are seeking to export or promote to overseas buyers. You can select multiple categories of eligible products. You'll be asked to provide a comprehensive description, remembering you can copy and paste your pre-prepared response. followed by answering a series of questions relevant to your product. If you're promoting goods made outside of Australia or services other than tourism services, you'll be required to upload the respective submissions. Templates for these submissions can be found on our website and it is strongly recommended that you prepare and complete these prior to the round opening. The application finalisation tab is the final section of the application form. It is in this tab that you provide all supporting documentation if you haven't done so in previous tabs. The bank account details of your business or organisation so we know where to pay your grant. The details of the primary contact person. This person will be responsible for accepting the grant agreement. Your website details or social media channel link. And a declaration that you must read, acknowledge, understand and accept by entering your details. Lastly, you'll be asked to acknowledge that Austrade does not accept incomplete applications and that you have re reviewed your application for completeness. To review your application, simply go back to the first tab and check each of your responses and click Save and Next at the end of each page until you get back to this tab where you can click on the Submit button. Upon clicking on the Submit button, you'll be directed to the Application Confirmation page. This will confirm that your application has been successfully submitted and you can download a copy of your application form as a PDF from here. Be sure to check your inbox and spam folder for an email that provides you with details on your successful application submission. 
If you do not receive an email within two hours of submitting your application, please contact EMDG Help immediately. Should you require any technical assistance whilst completing the application, please contact EMDG Help on 132878 or email us at emdg.help at austrade.gov.au. This brings us to the end of the video. Um, and as we said, we have uh, already published those videos on the YouTube channel, Australia's YouTube channel, so you can watch them um, as well. And we will publish the recordings of these webinars uh, on our website uh, very soon. Uh, but let's just recap some mandatory attachments requirements. Uh, Mel, I heard that there are about six or seven attachments that applicants must uh, get ready to, to upload. Could we go through them again and uh, describe what they are and how they should be uploaded? Sure, not a problem at all. So as per the grant guidelines, 6.4.1 attachments for T2 and the sample application form, there are seven areas that stipulate attachments are required. We'll address these seven documents that are required, noting that the plan to market is no longer a separate attachment. And as per um, the example document on our website, the content has now been added into an individual um, tab within the application form, as you would have seen in the video just now. To ensure um, you have the correct number of documents, we'll now go through the requirements for each eligibility criterion and, there are a number of, and the number of documents that you are required to upload. So the mandatory attachments for all Tier 2 applicants are as follows. You need to have two years of financial statements. Okay, so these are your profit and loss statements and balance sheets for the last two financial years. That is 2022-23 and 23-24. So repeating, two years worth of profit and loss statements as well as two years worth of balance sheet documents that need to be uploaded. The next requirement is that you need to show us that you have that evidence to have um, to be able to spend $20,000 on your marketing and promotional expenses or activities, I should say. And here we actually ask you for two documents as well. One being um, your latest bank statement for the 2023-24 financial year, and the other being your um, transaction history. And that's for the month of November. So it's two bank, um, two documents relating to the minimum capacity to um, spend. The next uh, mandatory um, section is your evidence of tax compliance. We ask for two documents. Here we're asking for things like your bad, um, bad statements, a notice of assessment or statement of account. Once again, we need two documents for the last two financial years. So 2022-23 and 2023-24. If you're a Tier 2 applying, you also need to provide us with evidence <coughs> that you have export sales. We need two invoices, and one of them being um, one that you've issued during the 2023-24 period. The next section looks um, at attachments which depend on the type of um, eligible product you are promoting or the entity type that you are. So if you are promoting um, products that are not made out, that are made outside of Australia or services um, other than tourism services, there are specific submissions that you need to upload at the time of applying. These templates can be found on our Austrade website and should be prepared well in advance of actually applying because they do take some time in filling out. Lastly, if you're a trust applying on behalf of your trustee, you need to provide us with your trustee documents and any amendments applicable. So each of these requirements here only um, require one document to be uploaded. I'll just quickly run through the system requirements behind these. So to make your application process easier, prepare your mandatory documents well in advance. The documents will vary by tier and include things like, as I mentioned before, bank statements, balance sheets, profit and loss, um, business activity statements, and so forth. You'll need to attach these documents to your online application. When we ask for a specific document, you can only upload it as a single file. Our advice is to scan and join multiple pages into a single PDF document. 
the system will only accept PDF files. And the size of the files must be less than 10 megabytes. Another important thing to note is that you should you need to have a stable internet connection. So make sure um, your Wi-Fi or your, you've got high quality data connection when completing your application form to avoid any disruptions. We also recommend you use a desktop computer. And make sure that your internet browsers, Google, <coughs> Google Chrome or Microsoft Edge, um, are up to date. And for form visibility and ease of use, we also recommend a minimum screen resolution of 1,280 by 800. As seen on the video, the online portal will have a table, which you can also see on the screen now. And this will be updated throughout the day. The table will highlight the percentage of funds that have been allocated by T and provide a status. Once funding has been exhausted for that particular tier, the portal will close and this will also be shown on the table. Thank you, Mel. Um, maybe before we go to questions and answers and maybe give uh, time for people to upload their uh, questions to Slido, we can clarify a few other things that uh, we do know have been coming through the inquiry line uh, relating to system but also some eligibility questions. One of them is MyGov ID, very um, obvious that um, we only require digital identity, as you said. Uh, so uh, you must have your MyGov ID, uh, actually it's moving to a uh, new branding called MyID. So please have it um, a talk to ATO if you, have, if you haven't uh, established that for yourself, given that ATO uh, owns that platform and that product. So you, you will need to have it set up for you. There's no other way how you can submit the application um, uh, to us. It must be through the EMDG online portal and then you submitting that uh, using your MyGov ID or MyID. If you're using a grant agent, uh, then the grant agent uh, will be able to log in using their uh, MyID, but it has to be connected through RAM, the Relationship Authorization Manager, uh, to the applicant um, business ABN. All of those instructions are on the ATO website. You can also call ATO to explain to you how this works and also there's some instructions on our EMDG online portal how to do that. Another thing that I highly recommend is if you do have your digital identity already set up, jump onto the online portal now and see if you can log in um, well in advance of the round opening. Mm. Simply just put, into, put in your details, go into your MyGov ID app or the newly named MyID app um, and check to see whether or not you can log in. That is right. And um, applicants can obviously log uh, applications themselves. If you are using a third party or grant agents, they must have a code uh, that Austrid issues uh, to grant agents. Austrid does not endorse any grant agents, but they have to be registered using the specific code that we issue to them to be able to submit EMDG applications on your behalf. Also to remind you, um, where you're using a grant agent, the contract or the grant agreement, if you're successful, is actually with the applicant. So it's not with a grant agent uh, because you are being offered a grant and you must uh, oblige with terms and conditions of that grant agreement, undertake activities and the payments will be going into your bank account. So I needed to clarify that given that we have been getting many questions to the inquiry line on that. And while we are at the ATO, um, another frequently asked question is also around tax compliance. So all businesses applying in any grant programs must be tax compliant, and that is an obligation by law for businesses to oblige with those uh, tax laws. Again, ATO manages that. Austrid does not provide advice on tax compliance or any, um, any tax arrangements, um, but we do require you to provide evidence as per the guidelines of your tax compliance. Types of documents that ATO has advised uh, that Austrid could actually view and ask for are business activity statements, notice of assessments, or statements of accounts. If you are um, receiving other documents from, Aust uh, from uh, ATO confirming your tax compliance, then please seek advice from them and upload that document uh, to, uh, to the uh, EMDG online form. We are not providing advice on any tax uh, compliance. And just also when uploading your um, tax compliance documents, please remove your tax file number yes. um, from those specific documents as well. And if you don't, then we will reduct it before we actually look at a document uh, uh, on our system as well. 
All right, I think we can open for slider questions now to Rachel. Uh, thank you, Rachel, and um, we're ready for them. Thank you, Noma. Good morning, everybody. Um, we've got a couple of similar queries coming through. Um, there's a couple here regarding the 10 markets. Um, one person is asking um, if they have less than 10 markets, do they have to list 10? And then we do have another query that asks if they have more than 10 markets, the application form only has a space for 10, where do I put the others? So maybe you could address both of those together, please. Um, sure, um, Melissa probably yeah, would no, like to answer this question. Yes. Not a problem. Mm. So if you have less than 10 markets, that's okay. You can put one market, two markets, eight markets, whatever, however many. The form just only allows you to put up to 10 markets on that specific um, question or questions, um, including the um, export earnings table as well. Um, if you have more than 10 markets, put your top 10 markets in there and then in your plan to market section, list down those additional markets. There's questions that will refer to, you know, asking you about, you know, what markets you're going to and so forth, pop them into the plan to market section. Mm. So yes, the form will ask you to list up to 10. You can select on the drop down menu for T2, again, to emphasize it's your existing export markets. If there is more, you can add them into the description uh, section of the plan to market. Um, we would uh, suggest that you list more than one, if, given that um, if you intend to, I guess, target, I guess, or, uh, existing markets, five or six, um, it will be good to put them on because we won't be accepting addition of new markets uh, later when we issue the grant agreement. So it's always wise to put more and then if you if your plans change and you only target three or four of those five that you listed, that's fine as well. Thank you, Noma. Um, we have a question here for the 23-24 tax returns. Can this be a draft version as this tax return is not due yet? I understand it is not due yet. Again, uh, I emphasise ATO can provide you with guidance. What makes you tax compliant for 22, 23 and 23 uh, and 24 financial year? The guidelines are clear that you must demonstrate tax compliant in the previous two income years and also be tax currently tax compliant in this financial year. If you're successful to be offered a grant agreement, we can also again check that tax compliance uh, before making a payment, again, uh, with master reporting reviews. So please um, uh, seek that advice from ATO. Um, I'm sure that businesses who haven't uh, lodged their tax return, uh, that their best statements, for example, might be in order for the previous quarters in the previous 23-24 financial year. So again, uh, it is your obligation to be tax compliant and to tell us that you are. Thank you. We're having a couple of similar questions come through regarding the requirements for the bank statements and the transaction history. Um, one of them is mentioning that, that we've mentioned the bank transactions for the month of November, noting that that's possibly only uh, 11 days of trading in November. Is this what we expect to see for the transaction statement? And then a similar question along the lines of, can we provide um, the, whole, the bank statement for the whole period or just for the month of October 24, if you could please clarify those requirements a little bit more. We were receiving those questions with inquiry line as well. Thank you, Rachel. Um, banks in Australia issue bank statements uh, at different periods, six monthly, quarterly, monthly. Um, and that is why we agreed that we allow a company or applicants to upload up to two documents, both are mandatory. One of them being official bank statement for your period, being six monthly from June or July or August or September. And in addition to that, you provide us with your transaction history from the month of November, which is the month when we open uh, to applications. The reason why we're asking that is that we need to satisfy your requirement or you need to satisfy the requirement of minimum capacity to spend at the time of applying. So you need to show us that you've got 20,000 in your bank to be ready to spend it should we offer you the grant agreement. And also uh, we may be paying you in advance at the start of the grant year in July 25, so that you're ready to go with your 20,000 and with 20,000 from us uh, to start expending uh, on your export promotion or uh, eligible activities. So that is the reason why. So with your application, we need to see that. And then later, if you're successful, um, at a, before we make a payment, we can again ask you for that. And if you are getting a grant agreement for two years, we will also ask you for that evidence uh, with the milestone report. Uh, so we can actually make that initial payment for the second year of your grant agreement. 
Thank you, Noma. Uh, we have a, a question here that the agents are saying that they can submit their applications before the 12th of November. Is this true? That is not true, uh, as uh, I need to repeat that the quality incentive program that was in place for EMDG reimbursement scheme uh, has been abolished. Austria does not provide um, any uh, information or any preferential treatment to grant agents. They receive information at the same time as you are, as businesses and applicants. Uh, for probity reasons, we are not opening the portal earlier to grant agents. That was a feature of the past. So grant agents can access the portal from 10 a.m. Uh, on the 12th of November, Australian Eastern Daylight Saving Time. Thanks, Nema. Um there's a question here, can we prepare online now and submit the application when open? Um, no, so the online, you cannot prepare online because application is not ready until, as I said, 12th of November, 10 a.m. AEDT. Uh, however, what you can do, we have published uh, the sample application form for each tier, including all supplementary mandatory templates for where you need to provide a, uh, additional information, uh, also exemplar um, plan to market. So you can review those documents. You can pre-prepare your responses in the sample application form, for example, and then cut and paste them into the online form when it opens. Thanks, Noma. Uh, we just have someone asking when will this webinar be shared online? As soon as we can. Uh, mm -hmm. Technical uh, colleagues will be uh, doing this as fast as possible after uh, this webinar. So sometime tomorrow or early next week, hopefully, they will be online. Noting that the online uh, portal um, uh, demonstration is already on YouTube channel. Thank you, Noma. Um, our business had sales over 500,000 in financial year 23-24, but less than 500,000 in financial year 23. Are we still eligible for tier two? We are looking at uh, the evidence of the turnover in the most recent financial year. So in that case, if you can, if your profit and loss and, and all financial statements are showing that, then yes. Uh, thank you. There's also just another question in regards to the um, eligibility for the bank statement amounts. Um, it does. It says uh, twenty thousand dollars per year. Does the bank statement need to be forty thousand dollars or just twenty thousand dollars? Just twenty thousand, because that is your minimum capacity to spend to to match the minimum grant of twenty thousand. So when you're preparing your application in the planned expenditure table that Mel demonstrated, you will need to tell us what is your planned expenditure. So your total planned expenditure for each category of expenses that you uh, intend to incur. Um, so that at a minimum must be forty thousand. Uh, meaning that your 20,000 uh, of your contribution and 20,000 minimum grant makes up that 40,000 of eligible planned expenditure. So 20,000 for you. Thank you, Noma. I can see some great questions coming through, so thank you for all of your questions. Um, there's a query here just um, seeking some, clar um, some more clarity on the profit and loss and balance um, statements from the last two financial years. Is it four files or is it two files or is it one file? If you could just clarify that, please. Okay. So what it is, um, so you've got your 2022-23, okay, and 2023-24. So what that means, it's four files, one for 2022-23 balance sheet, one for 2023-24 balance sheet, one for 2022-23 profit and loss, and one for 2023-24 profit and loss. Mm. So it's four files. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, is, there, is there a minimum amount of export sales allowed to apply for the T2 grant? There is no minimum, but you are to be an established exporter and provide evidence of exporting of at least two export sales invoices from uh, 23 uh, one of them being within the 18 months of application. Uh, so that is at the minimum for you to demonstrate that. We're not asking you for the minimum amount, but we are looking at uh, if someone is uh, applying as a T2 with a half a million of turnover, we are expecting to see some commensurate uh, sales uh, occurring with that exporter. Um, and this is, as I explained in the previous webinars, we have seen a lot of applicants in round one and round two of the program trying to apply in higher T's with a view to get higher grants, but then 
not spending the grant or um, basically not being ready to expand. So we will be looking uh, at your application in its entirety to see whether you are meeting all eligibility requirements. Thank you. Um, we have a gentleman that's asked, I have one invoice currently and I'm awaiting a second order. If I don't receive the second order, I would assume I would have to apply for T1. Could you please clarify? Um, so that is a very interesting question. Uh, so I'll ask the uh, answer the first part of the question. You must have to, at least two invoices. So if you don't have the second one in, uh, before November, before you apply, then you cannot apply in T2 because you don't have the evidence. Um, you cannot apply in T1 given that you're already exporting, uh, shown by that first invoice. T1 is only for new to export applicants. Thank you. Um, we've had a query come through regarding the character count for optional questions. Is it 1,000 or 3,000? Yep. So the optional questions um, are 3,000 characters in length, as are all other descriptive um, responses required within the application form. So that's 3,000 characters um, in length, reminding um, everyone that characters do also include full stop, space bar, um, bullet points and so forth. So it's around about 500 words and um, that's roughly about a one A4 page worth of um, wording. And that is the question. We that's plan to yeah. market. Plan to market and descriptive and Descriptive of. questions. Um, again, we gave you that uh, amount of, of, of spaces and words for you to address all questions in the plan to market and all other questions in the application form to sufficient detail, given that we are requiring uh, or EMDG requires you to have high quality strategic plan to markets. And if you do not address them to sufficient quality or uh, information and detail, then your application may be uh, ineligible or incomplete. Thank you. We've had a, a couple of similar questions come through regarding if um, the uh, applicant is spending more than $100,000. Um, do they only enter $100,000 as the full spend or how could you please clarify the requirements for the, for the expenditure proposed amount? Thank you for that question. We had received some inquiries around that. So at the time of your application being in November, you are planning your expenditure for the two years in advance, which is 25, 26 and 26, 27. So that is your future planned eligible expenditure. You will enter um, up to double the grant amount uh, in the online application form. When it comes, if you're successful to receive the grant agreement, when it comes to milestone report, we will again ask you to report what is your actual expenditure that you have spent in that financial year, and that it will not be limited. So you can um, then enter more than 100,000, but then we can only give you up to the maximum grant amount of eligible expenditure grant. Thank you. Um, we've had a question come through. Can you add an expense that's incurred immediately to the grant period starting, i.e. Uh, 25, financial year 25, 26, um, if the activities occur in financial year 25, 26, for example, cheaper to purchase flight tickets, trade show deposits, etc.? cetera? Uh, the eligible expenses must be incurred in the grant activity period, which for uh, round four is starting from July 25. So yes, if you immediately after receiving, um, actually after 1st of July 25, incur that eligible expenditure, then yes, they can be accepted as eligible, provided that we need to obviously uh, assess it all when, when it comes to master reporting stage. Thank you. We just have um, some, some people asking some further questions in regarding to the $20,000 requirement on the bank statement. Um, they're just wanting some further clarity on whether we're needing to show $20,000 in the bank statement for November 24, even though the grant is for financial year 25-26. If you could just clarify that a little bit further, please. Yeah, thank you, Rachel. As I said before, you are providing evidence at the time of applying. Austrade, if you're successful to be offered a grant agreement, we can ask you um, before we make a payment, again later the milestone reporting stage or any time during the grant agreement to see actually can you do you have capacity to spend. But um, the way how we are receiving applications and allocating grants in the order they receive, we need to see the evidence at the time of application. That is why we're asking you to show us that you are an established exporter 
with the ability to expand and you have capacity to spend the minimum $20,000. Noting that your turnover is half a million, so that $20,000, we hope, it would be an issue for you. Thank you. Can you please provide some timeframes on when grantees or applicants will find out if they are successful and when the grants will be received? Very good question. Thank you, Rachel. So uh, we're opening to uh, in November to applications to T2 on the 12th of November. We will start uh, <clears throat> assessing applications uh, from then. Um, applicants that uh, submit incomplete applications or they're not eligible, they will be advised straight away. You can also, we will send you an email. You can also log on into the EMDG online portal to see the status of your application. Applicants that are eligible and successful to be offered a grant agreement can expect to hear from us from late January. The reason for that is we will be offering you with that email the grant agreement for you to review and accept, and we'll give you up to 21 days to come back with an accepted grant agreement. We won't be issuing grant agreements over the Christmas break and holiday period in January, so therefore we will do that from late January 25. And then, uh, just the second part of that, uh, Rachel, just to clarify, given that I said that in previous webinars, um, you, when you accept your grant agreement, we'll, we will execute it on our end, then you have your contract in place, and then from 1st of July, we can uh, start making those initial uh, payments to grantees of 20000 and so forth. Uh, milestone reporting will follow then. And just to um, remind everyone, uh, just to let everyone know, rather than remind everyone, re let everyone know that you've got 21 days to accept that grant agreement mm -hmm. um, should you be eligible to receive one. Thank you. Um, we've had a question come through regarding on um, extra support that will be available um, at application opening time. Um, I know there is some information there on the screen about that, but could you just provide some more clarity on, on the support that will be offered at the application opening time? Yeah, th thank you, Rachel. Yes, we recognise that uh, we're opening and we will be closing the portal once the funding is allocated. So we have extended our opening times for the EMDG help desk from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, from 6th of November. So that will be uh, available for applicants from then on. Uh, we will advise you when this obviously period concludes, but it will be there for you to ask uh, any questions around application process or um, any queries around how do I upload things or whatnot. But we really encourage you to be ready with all documents, all mandatory attachments, uh, plan to market questions answered so you can actually be ready to, to upload and write. Thank you, Nema. Um, we've had a, a question come through regarding that uh, the bank statements, which bank statements will we accept? Um, will we accept bank statements from non-Australian banks um, for the uh, evidence? Um, this um, uh, person has mentioned that they use an American bank account. Will they need to transfer to an Australian-based institution for this eligibility yes. requirement? Yes, we, we, we're asking you to give us um, that, that a bank statement, firstly, is in the applicant entity name. Uh, we need to see that uh, easily for the ease of assessments that we can correlate. You are the applicant. This is your ABN. This is the name of the business on the bank statement. Um, it will help us assess it quicker, um, but also uh, showing your compliance. Um, so we are not accepting any other arrangements. It has to be an Australian institution. Thank you. Um, there's, thank you for everyone's questions. There are quite a few coming through. Um, I, I know that we are running a little bit tight on time, so I'll try and consolidate some of them. We've had some people still querying um, if they have invoices that aren't paid, if they have sales that haven't eventuated, or if they have prior, uh, applied for previous tier. Uh, there's one question here about a previous tier one applicant and that they can't apply in that tier anymore. Um, are you able to just provide some clarity on that export uh, requirement uh, for, you know, paid versus invoiced and things like that and eligibility for previous tiers and the previous rounds? Yeah, thank you. So obviously um, the tier eligibility for T2 is that you can access from uh, round four uh, this tier for up to four years. So if, if you are a current grantee under the, the rounds one to three, for example, and the tier, um, uh, your T could be T2 or T3 or even T1, uh, you need to read the guidelines to understand how this is changing in terms of how we count the number of uh, Ts and there is a limit um, uh, 
to the number of years that you can access a certain tier. So T2 can be accessed up to four years. So if you currently had uh, a grant agreement for up to three years in T2, and you were paid across those the, uh, the um, three years, uh, T3 grants, that you can you can only access one more year of T2. So that is that is the T limits within your overall eight year limit. The second part of the question, if you cannot substantiate that you are an established exporter and that you're currently exporting to the two pieces of evidence that we are requiring, which is the two export sale invoices that they have been paid during the course of 2324 and one within the 18 months of uh, applying in November, then you're not meeting the eligibility requirement. It has to be at least two invoices. So. Um, Unfortunately, if you cannot substantiate that, then you cannot apply either in T2 or T3. Thank you, Nema. Um, we've just had some a, a couple of questions here regarding uh, some clarity around the time frames for the grant. So, uh, in relation to how many years can you apply for when you're applying for the grant, and if they, for whatever reason, happen to miss this application period, when is the next grant application likely to be available? So when, when planning to apply in round four, you need to look at your grants, uh, prior grants history, which uh, Melissa has explained is available on the Indigy Online portal. If you're using a grant agent, obviously then they may know that, but you can always write to us to Indigy Help and we can check it for you. You cannot access the MDG or you cannot have received more than eight grants in, in, in the entire history of you applying in EMDG. So that's, you must check that. Also the T limit supply, as I just explained, um, so you will need to uh, think about that. Uh, but if, if you've got remaining years left under EMDG, then you can apply for up to two years in round four, for 25, 26 and 26, 27. So that, that is the, the time period. If you miss out in round four, uh, then you will need to wait when we open round five. At this point in time, we don't have opening dates for round five. Thank you. Do we have time for one more question, maybe? Maybe one more. That means <laughs> okay, great. Uh, is there any required training deliverables as part of this application? Uh, for T2 applicants, we're not asking for you to complete any export uh, training um, as a mandatory uh, training. We, we are asking T1 applicants to do export readiness training. But you're welcome to look at our Grow, Grow Global Toolkit. We have listed a number of recognised training courses that may be useful for you if you are looking to expand or, you know, um, even thinking about T3 to diversify into new markets. There's a lot of resources there for you to um, review. Uh, and uh, also training courses listed there for you to access. But there's, it's not mandatory, it's just if you would like to. Uh, thank you. Do we have time for one more possibly? Okay, <laughs> of course, <laughs> yes. Great. Uh, there's a question here. Can a tax agent lodge applications on behalf of its client or has it, or has it to be the business owner to apply, which I think we have addressed in the in the mind gulf questions, but maybe just some clarity on that. Just a clarity. Business owners, uh, companies, uh, businesses can apply directly. You don't need to use a third party or a tax agent with that. Obviously, that is your business and commercial decision if you need someone to help you with that process. Um, and if you do, as Melissa explained, that third party grant agent or tax agent must be registered with um, Austrade to receive a unique code uh, to be able to submit the online application. Yeah. So, um, if you don't, if your tax agent doesn't have um, a unique agent code, please ensure that they get in contact with the MDG help um, desk and um, register their details with us, so we can provide them with an agent code. Um, they will, as um, a tax agent, they will also need to have your permission um, as the applicant um, within RAM to be able to um, be an authorised person to submit the application form. So that only applies to tax agents. Um, the relationship is different to a great agent. Mm -hmm. So please ensure that um, yeah, anything that needs to be prepared in advance of applying is prepared and just contact our EMDG help um, front, door, um, front door team. Mm. And that obviously doesn't um, um, relinquish you of your obligations under the grant agreement. As I said before, people can help you to submit your online application form or help you with milestone reporting later. But the obligation that you have with the Commonwealth and Austria is to conduct those activities, incur eligible expenses and report back uh, to receive payments. And I'll just quickly just jump, um, jump in with the one last comment, just in regards to the supporting documentation that I um, didn't mention earlier. 
When you are uploading your supporting documentation, you need to have a unique file name for each document that you are uploading. If you are to use the same file name for each document that you go to upload, it will actually reject it from the system. So make sure that all your files are uniquely named and relevant to the section that you're um, uploading that document for. So if it's your, no, your profit and loss for 2022-23, label it as that. If it's your um, trust deed, label it as your trust deed and so forth. So just to make sure that um, we can actually upload your documents mm -hmm. without any delay. That is lovely. Any more questions? I think we got, oh, be on time. So maybe uh, we concluded here. Thank you for your time today and all wonderful questions. We hope that we have answered most of those. If not, EMDG help is there for, for you to ask more questions. We wish you all the best and I thank my colleagues and Melissa for delivering this webinar with me today. We wish you all the best in preparing to apply. Remember, 12th of November, 10 a.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Saving Time is the time when you can start applying in T2 of EMDG round four. Thank you.